Stay tuned now for Robert Young starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening, there's wonderful comedy entertainment on two great shows when you set your radio dial to this same NBC station. Listen first to The Bob Hope Show with guest David Niven and the musical stylings of Miss Margaret Whiting and Les Brown's Band of Renown. Then stay tuned for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, featuring 30 fun-packed minutes of mirth and music. It's an hour of truly enjoyable radio entertainment, so be sure to hear it all. And remember, tomorrow evening on many of these same stations, listen to a special program, These Are Your Friends. Now it's Father Knows Best on NBC. (laughs) Now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. Welcome to Springfield and another half hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. It's Saturday morning in Springfield. What's more, it's a beautiful, warm spring morning. The kind that makes a man feel like getting outdoors and working in the soil. As a matter of fact, as Jim Anderson comes down to breakfast in his robe and slippers, those are pretty much the thoughts he expresses. Like this. Oh, man, what a morning. Look at that sky out there, honey. Ever see such a perfect blue? Makes you want to get outside. Uh, dear. Makes you want to get your hands into the good soil. Get close to nature. To the grass and the flowers and the the berries. Well, you're pretty close to them right now. You're sitting on Kathy's toast and strawberry jam. Huh? Oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, look at that. Why does that kid have to leave everything on chairs? Well, I tried to warn you, but you were so wrapped up in nature. Uh, will that jelly wash off my robe? You can try it. Should work as long as it's not greased. Sometimes I suspect that girl spreads jelly on toast just for me to sit on. She rarely ever eats it. Uh, should I use hot water? No, just warm. Say, Mom, could I go over to... Hey, what's Dad doing, washing clothes? (laughs) No, he just got a little too close to nature. Huh? I'm, uh, not doing so hot on this, Margaret. Why don't you use the washing machine, Dad? That's what we got it for. Look, Bud, I... I've got some things you can wash out as long as you add it. Sweatshirts, blue jeans... But I'm not doing the washing. You're not? No. Well, you better be careful, then. You're getting your robe all wet. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Leave him alone, Bud. Uh, Mom, uh, can I go over to Joe's house? Well, I don't know. What are you going to do? Oh, just mess around. Seems like a good day for just messing around. Well, I think maybe there's a little messing around you could do here. Yes, Bud. How would you like to come outside with me this morning? We'll start getting things in shape. What things? Bud, don't eat that breakfast. I just put it on the table for your father. You've already eaten. I have? (laughs) Jim, I'll finish that robe. You sit down and eat your breakfast before your son beat you to it. Okay. Like what things, Dad? Huh? What things are we going to get in shape? Oh, you know, uh, maybe paint the fence, repair it if it needs it, prune the roses, get the ground ready for a garden. It's a wonderful day for it. Uh, Pass the salt, would you please? Could we start digging a swimming pool? Swimming pool? They don't cost so much, Dad. Oh, no, of course not. What's a few thousand dollars? You can put one in for $79.62. Pass the syrup, please. (laughs) Honest, Dad. I don't doubt it at all. Claude Messner probably makes them out of used plastic. No, this family put one in for just $79. I I read about it in that Home and House magazine. Uh Uh-huh. They used the basement of a house that was blown away by a tornado, and they picked up a lot of scrap iron at the junkyard for reinforcing, and their friends poured the cement. I see. $79. Yeah. 
Well, while we're waiting for a tornado to come along, we'd better get to work on the fence and garden first. After that, can we start digging the pool? Who knows? Oh, boy, come on, let's get started. Are you fellows really serious about wanting to work? I've never felt more like it. There's something about a spring day like this that really gives you the old zip. Yes, sir, it does a man good to get out and work with his hands. Well, that's fine, because I'm starting spring house cleaning today, and I'll need a lot of furniture moved and a lot of scrubbing and waxing done. So how about it? Pass the syrup, bud. <laughs> Maybe you didn't hear what I said. I'm starting spring house cleaning. I heard cleaning. what you said. I uh, was just thinking. Uh, actually, it would be more to your advantage if we got out and did the outside work. You know, do all that heavy stuff. You know, the work that's too heavy for you and the girls to do. Uh-huh. Dad's right. I don't like that scrubbing either. No, it's... <laughs> it's uh, not that, bud. It's just that I actually have so little time to work around home that I ought to try to channel my efforts where it will do the most good. Uh-huh. Well, you understand, honey. After all these years, I should. Well, it's not that I don't want to help you in the house, honey. No, of course not. It's just that... Well, I just don't want you to have to get out and do that back-breaking work. I see. After all, that's my job. Mommy! How big a pool are we going to dig, Dad? Uh, we're not going to start on that right away, bud. Mommy, where's my toast and jelly? Your father sat on it. He did? Well, I didn't mean to do it. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Every time I leave my toast and jelly on a chair, you always sit on it. <laughs> Well, now, did you ever stop to think that it's your fault for leaving them on chairs? It's ruined half my clothes. Costs a lot of money to get them clean. And that strawberry jelly is the worst stuff in the world to get out. So, what are you going to do in the future now? Use some other kind of jelly? <laughs> oh, me. Come on, bud. We'd better get going. Okay. Would a ten-foot pool be too long? Where are they going, Mommy? Out to break their backs tilling the soil. What? <laughs> Never mind. What other kind of jelly have we got, Mommy? One kind is as bad as another. Might as well stick to strawberry. But Daddy doesn't like to sit on that kind anymore. <laughs> Mother, you'll have to come and help me move the buffet. I can't budge it. Okay, I'll be there in a minute as soon as I clear the table. Why can't Father do some of this house cleaning work? He's home today. Yes, but he's going out and work on the garden. Well, let's get the buffet moved. It's not fair. That's what I think. Well, there's nothing to do about it. Kathy, when you get through eating, maybe you can start washing the dining room windows. I'm going outside and help Daddy. Help him do what? I don't know, but he needs me. <laughs> oh, great. Well... Let's go in the dining room and move the buffet. This whole thing is unfair, Mother. Where do you want it moved? Well, I've got the floor cleaned this far, so we can move it right over there. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. oh, gee, this is heavy, isn't it? Ooh. Come on, come on, once more. Uh. Um, I'm busy, bud. Uh. Could you find me a pencil? Find one yourself. I need it right away. Oh, that is Dad needs it. What's he going to do, spade up the garden with a pencil? No, he needs it to write Are down. you sure you boys aren't overworking yourselves? Not hmm? yet. Well, you want to be awfully careful. Oh, could you help us move this, bud? I'm helping Dad. What's he doing? Sitting in the den. <laughs> That's about what I figured Wait, I think I know where there's a pencil Right in the desk drawer on the den Want us to come and open the drawer for you? No, you won't need to We can handle it Mother, something's got to be done about this Dad, look in the desk drawer I think there's a pencil in there I already found it Oh, good Let's see what you've got written down so far Oh, I've just gotten started is all Let's see Work schedule. Hey, that looks keen. 
Well, if you want to get something done, the only thing to do is organize your work. Yeah. Then you know what you're doing, and you can really accomplish something. Yeah. What do we put down next? Dig pool? No. <laughs> no, we better start on the fence, I believe. A couple of good coats of paint will protect the wood from the spring rains. Okay, put that down, and then put down dig pool. Well, I think we'd better put down repair fence first. Got to do that before we can paint it. Yeah. Remember this, son. If you're going to do a thing, do it right. Don't do a superficial job. Start from the ground and work up. Yeah. Except for swimming pools. It's best to start from the ground and work down. <laughs> well, we're not digging any pools right now. I suppose what we ought to do is go out and check the fence, estimate just how much repairing it needs. Dad... Maybe we'd better take a little rest. <laughs> well, not yet, bud. We've hardly gotten started. We don't want to get over-exhausted. Well, let's see now. Repair fence, yes. Uh, we can see what it needs as we go along. Number two, paint fence. Uh, number three, uh, well, as long as berry bushes are next to the fence, we might as well cut those back next. You see, this is how good planning can save you a lot of time. Yeah, Oh, I'm getting sleepy. Number four, well, we'll make that prepare flower bed. Number five, say, you know what would be a great idea? Let's build a little flower box for your mother. Put it right outside the kitchen window so she can look at it while she's doing dishes. She'll love that. Margaret! That pool is getting awful far down on the list. <laughs> Margaret, would you come in the den for a minute? I'm cleaning house. Well, this will just take a second. Got a surprise for you. I'll bet. <laughs> I always get a kick out of all the fuss women make out of house cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> well, here I am. What's the big surprise? I hope this is worth climbing down off a stepladder for. You'll love it, honey. How would you like to have a nice little flower box outside your kitchen window? So you can see it while you're washing dishes all day. <laughs> <laughs> what a... Beautiful, sentimental thought. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> Honey, where are you going? Back up the ladder. <laughs> Dad. Yeah? Mom didn't seem awful enthusiastic about that. Well, she's pretty wrapped up in her house cleaning right now. I'll tell you what. Instead of building her a little window box, we'll build her a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's go measure the kitchen window, and then we'll draw up some plans for it. Okay. We can save ourselves a lot of time and headaches by accurate planning. Gee, look at Mom balance on that ladder. She's pretty good. We've got to find a tape measure someplace. Hey, Mom, could you find us a tape measure? What? Bud Anderson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What did I do now? Asking your mother to climb down just to go find you a tape measure. What do you think she is, a performing monkey? I don't want her to perform. We just got to measure something for our work. <laughs> what work? I think you'll find one in my sewing basket, bud. Thanks. Look in the sewing basket, Dad. Mother, I'm not going to put up with this any longer. You're not? No, and you're not either. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. I just wish there was some way to trap them into helping us. I'll get it. Well, there isn't any way, so we might as well go ahead and get it done and stop wasting time feeling sorry for ourselves. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, Mr. Bentley. Yes, he's home. Do you want to talk to him? Just a minute, and I'll call him. Who is it? It's Mr. Bentley from the home office in Cleveland. He's in town, and he wants Father to come down and see him at the hotel. Hmm... If I didn't know better, I'd think he planned this himself. Wait a minute. Mother, I've got it. I've got it. Now, just a minute, Betty. What are you going to do? Shh. Hello, Mr. Bentley? Betty. Uh, Father's all tied up out in the backyard right now, but he wonders if maybe you'd like to come out to the house instead. No, Betty, no. He thought it might be more comfortable here. No, no. Oh, well, that'll be wonderful, Mr. Bentley. Goodbye. Good heavens, child. He can't come here. The house is a mess. I know it. And Father would die if Mr. Bentley saw it like this. So now he'll have to help clean it up. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs>
Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. Monday night brings musical entertainment on the NBC radio network, and this Monday evening you'll hear wonderful entertainment when you set your dial to this station. The Railroad Hour will feature Gordon McRae and Eileen Farrell and Victor Herbert's musical masterpiece, The Red Mill. When you listen to the Railroad Hour Monday, you'll hear such favorite melodies as Every Day is Ladies' Day because you're you and in old New York. Later, the Telephone Hour will present guest pianist Seymour Lipkin, who will offer music by Schubert, Chopin, and Rachmaninoff. Monday's Voice of Firestone will feature the tenor voice of Ferruccio Taglievini and the music of Howard Barlow's orchestra. Be sure to listen to NBC's Monday Night of Music. An underhanded plot has been hatched to induce Jim Anderson and Bud along with him to lend a helping hand to the spring cleaning festivities. However, Jim doesn't know this yet, as he and Bud blithely measure the kitchen window or its future flower box. Like this. Uh, 34 and a half inches. 34 and a half inches. Check. 34 and a half. Check. You keep out of this, shrimp. Well, I want to help, too. This is men's work. Now get lost. Ah, turn blue. Uh, 29 and a quarter. 29 and a quarter. Check. 29 quarters. Check. Dad, tell her to cut it out. Kathy, cut it out. Father. I believe we have all our measurements. Now, if I can just climb down out of here without breaking the forces... Father, I have news for you. I have news for you, too, Daddy. You're kneeling on my jelly sandwich. Huh? <laughs> oh, for Pete's sakes. Kathy, why don't you eat these things instead of leaving them lying around? How can I? You're always sitting on them. <laughs> Father, Mr. Bentley just called. Bentley? In Cleveland? Well, why didn't you call me? It was probably important. Well, don't get excited. He's not in Cleveland now. He's in town. In town? At the hotel. But you don't have to go down there. He's coming out here. Out here? That's right. Well, whatever gave him an idea like that? I don't know. <laughs> probably thought it would be more comfortable. Well, I wish you'd let me talk to him. Margaret! He certainly picked a fine time to come out, didn't he? House all torn up and everything? Margaret! Don't shout, dear. I'm coming. Margaret Bentley's here from the home office, and he's coming out here to the house this afternoon. Yes, I heard that. Well, what are we going to do? The rugs are all torn up, the draperies are down. I don't think you can get the place back in shape by then. That's right, Father. We can't. Well, in that case, there's only one thing to do. That's right, Father. Keep him outside. What? <laughs> Probably rather sit outside on a wonderful day like this anyway. But, Father... Matter of fact, he's sort of an outdoors guy. Jim, you can't just have him sit on the ground or the porch steps. Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what we'll have to do. We'll all have to pitch in and get the lawn furniture down from the rafters in the garage. Oh, no. And then you make up a bunch of sandwiches and some lemonade and serve it to us out in the backyard. Or maybe iced tea would be better. Dad, what about these measurements and the thing we're going to build? Well, we'll get to it. Put the measurements in the den so they won't get lost. Okay. Wait a minute, Jim. Where are you going? I've got to go up and put on something a little more presentable. And I'd better shave, too. Oh, dear. Say, that stepladder will have to go out to the garage so you can start getting the lawn furniture down. We won't need it. We'll just swing by our tails. How do you do that, Mommy? For a couple of monkeys like us, it won't be hard at all. Mother, don't look at me that way. I'm sorry. You and your big ideas. I was only trying to help. Now we not only have the house to clean, we have to go out and move lawn furniture, too. Well, Mother, I was only... And make a few thousand sandwiches. Are we going to have a picnic, Mommy? <sighs> this is no picnic, believe me. Oh. <sighs> I've just got to sit down a minute. <clears throat> My, this feels good. Mommy. Yes, Angel. You're sitting on my jelly sandwich. <laughs> what? Oh, for heaven's sake. Mother, do you think these are enough sandwiches for those 
hard-working slaves out there? Oh, it should be. I wish we had more ice for the tea, though. We ought to put in a little ground glass. Just look at Father and Mr. Bentley lolling back in those deck chairs like a couple of retired millionaires. Oh, this is a man's world, all right. Well, I guess they do have some business to discuss. I'll bet. Probably both worried sick over who's going to win the Kentucky Derby this year. Where's that other tray, Betty? The silver one? Oh, I don't know. What gets me is why Bud and Kathy think they have to loll around out there, too. They haven't got any business to discuss. Well, I haven't had any time to do anything about it. Oh, it burns me up. Men. Ugh. Well, don't cry about it. You know whose fault it is that Mr. Bentley's here. I know it. Well, do I look all right to go out there? I dressed in about a half a minute. Yeah, you look all right. I don't know when we're ever going to get this house straightened up again, let alone finish cleaning it. Well, maybe Mr. Bentley will leave pretty soon. I don't know what we'll have for supper tonight. There's not a thing in the house. I'm not hungry anyway. I have to open a can of beans or something. Well, come on, let's go out and serve the millionaire playboys. Okay, let's go. Can you get the door? Yeah, I, I think so. And try and keep Bud and Kathy from beating Mr. Bentley to all the sandwiches. Kathy's already got a sandwich. Uh-oh, if it's jelly, we're in trouble. Oh, boy! Look at that Bud sit up like a fox spotting a wounded rabbit. <laughs> Look, food! Just stay where you are, Bud. Well, well, what have we here? How are you, Mrs. Anderson? Good to see you again. Don't get up, Mr. Bentley. It's good to see you again, too. My, you look lovely. So fresh and rested. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bud, wait till you're served. Fred, this is my other daughter, Betty. I, I don't know whether you remember her or not. Well, it's been a few years now. The Kansas City Convention, I believe. That's right. You're certainly getting to be a very pretty young lady. Well, thank you. I wish I were about 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for some lemon in your tea, Mr. Bentley? Just a touch, thank you. I don't want any tea. Nobody asked you. Ah, this is fine. I was just telling Jim what a nice, friendly backyard you have. I like this idea of outdoor living. It's, uh, it's so American. Uh, yes. Jim tells me he spends quite a bit of time out here. Well, it's good for a man to get his hands in the soil. A little manual labor can be real relaxing. Well, I can see you people know how to live. You relax and enjoy what you've got. No fuss, no hustle and bustle. Take it easy. That's the ticket right there. You're so right, Fred. I guess that's what keeps you looking so young, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, you have no idea what it does for me. <laughs> hey, where's my jelly sandwich? Uh-oh, don't anyone get up. <laughs> Daddy, are you... Uh, just take one of those on the plate, kitten. Well, okay. <clears throat> I'll have another one, too. Bud. Please, thank you. Yes, sir, I admire the way you people live So different from my home Everything's always at such a high pitch I like a comfortable place to live in Well, that's the way we feel, too Yeah, I like a place that looks like it's lived in You ought to see our place <laughs> Well, I'd love to I know it's got just the kind of an atmosphere I like I want to see it before I go. Well, it, uh, it's really such a nice day outside. It's a shame to waste it inside. Uh, yes, we shouldn't lose a second of this weather. I'll have another sandwich, please. Bud, what are you doing, swallowing them whole? <laughs> well, I don't blame him. They're certainly good. I can tell you've got a wonderful cook in your family, Jim. She's the best, the very best. Yes. Yeah, uh, you ought to try one of her meals. Well, I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm no good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like my wife. I tell you, 
There's nothing I like better than a good home-cooked meal. Uh, well, really, you know, I'm... I'm on the road a good deal, and I tell you, I'm, I got to that point where I can hardly stand to go in one more restaurant. Why don't you eat here? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, by George, I'd love to. You couldn't have said anything that would make me happier. Oh, well, we'd love to have you, Mr. Bentley. Look, Fred, I... I... I might as well tell you the awful truth. Jim? My wife's in the middle of spring cleaning and the house is a complete mess. It is? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what my wife is doing. That's why I made this trip, to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could uh, uh, go out and eat. No, no, you don't, Jim. Nobody's going to talk me out of this. But I'll make you a proposition, Mrs. Anderson. Jim, Bud, and I will pitch in and finish the house cleaning if you and Betty will cook up the best meal you've ever cooked. You, you mean that? Look, with the years of training Mrs. Bentley has given me, I'm an expert at spring cleaning. Mr. Bentley, you're a doll. Come on, Jim. Better get to work. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Have you got some old fishing pants or something we could put on? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, come with me. Yeah. Hey, there's my jelly sandwich. <laughs> Shh, your father's going to change his trousers anyway. Come on, bud. Okay, soon as I get another sandwich. Betty? Yes, mother. <laughs> you and your big ideas. <laughs> the Andersons will return in just a moment. Every weekday, Monday through Friday, you're invited to enjoy the wonderful daytime programs on the NBC radio network. And when you listen, you'll be in good company. For every day, millions of Americans tune for such fun-packed programs as the Bob Hope Daytime Show, The Phrase That Pays, and Welcome Travelers. Then there are your friends on the daytime dramas. Such intriguing stories as Pepper Young's family, Life Can Be Beautiful, Young Widder Brown, The Woman in My House, Just Plain Bill, and The Road of Life. Every day as you do your housework, keep the radio dial set to NBC and this station so that you may hear and enjoy these and other fine daytime programs. The listening's fine in the daytime on the NBC radio network. Well, the white frame house on Maple Street is all spick and span again. Dinner's over, and their guest and leading house cleaner, Mr. Bentley, has gone back to his hotel. Jim and Margaret are in the den, relaxing. Like this. Well, I must say, this was quite a day. Yeah. The house looks surprisingly good. Thank you. Isn't Mr. Bentley wonderful? Oh, he's all right. But of course, Bud and I never got that window box built for you. Well, that's all right. I'll try to bear up somehow. Well, maybe next weekend. Uh-huh. Oh, say, the Phillips wanted us to drop over this evening for a little bridge. This evening? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, I couldn't make it. I, I'm too tired. Tired? Yeah, I don't understand it either. Never did get outside and do any heavy work. All I did was housework. I just don't understand it. <laughs> no, and neither will any other man. Good night, dear. Good night, Margaret. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Earl Ross. Father Knows Best is based on characters created by Ed James, written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network.